You're listening to a podcast from EvidenceNetwork.ca, making evidence matter in Canadian health policy. About eight years ago, doctors Aaron Keeley and Claire Liddy founded the Champlain Base E Consult Service because they were frustrated with wait times. Physicians use e consult to ask specialists questions about patient care directly. Specialists respond within a week, requesting more information, recommending referrals, or, quite often, offering a little guidance to physicians on how to manage issues without a referral. Liddy explains. The issue of wait times is a huge problem, not so much for urgent um, referrals, but really for those non-urgent referrals. So things that, you know, I've worked with you as your family doctor and we've tried a few different things, but now you need to see a specialist. And it's extremely common for me to put in a request for an appointment like that and have people wait um, you know, three months, six months, nine months, even uh, in some cases more than a year. It's very difficult to um, then for the patient um, to know that they're waiting for that appointment and it definitely creates a lot of anxiety and ongoing symptoms. Since eConsult's launch, thousands of patients have benefited from medical specialties insights without referral appointments. It's an innovation that drastically reduces wait times. Keeley says the feedback has been tremendous. I think that the biggest thing that warms our heart is that um, for our service, over 33,000 patients have had access to specialist advice within two days um, instead of six to nine months or longer in some specialties. And we know that that has made a difference for them. So the worry and the um, cost of needing to come to an appointment they didn't need, but, but really the the worry of not knowing is this something serious, is this not, um, has has just been tremendously uh, rewarding. It really has truly been the most rewarding thing. What started as a pilot project by two frustrated doctors is evolving into standard practice as more jurisdictions, including the Ontario government, get on board, which got Keeley and Liddy thinking. How many other healthcare innovations are still struggling to move beyond the pilot phase? So they're sharing the lessons they learned along the way in hopes of encouraging other healthcare innovators. First up, Keeley and Liddy balanced research with practice. They knew innovations need solid evidence that shows value. They also knew that evidence helps apply for grants, which keeps research funded. But they also knew the value of including people who would be using the innovation early on. This ensured that the project made sense in the practical world from the get-go and was less likely to be tucked away in an academic journal. Liddy explains. So very early on in our project, um, we had invited um, a small community hospital to be involved and we had the administrators who were involved and then also the um, the providers both from the specialist side and also the primary care providers and uh, clinic managers, referral clerks, so really trying to get the voice and input of the people who, if the project was successful, would eventually be the folks who would need to be implementing it. Second, Keeley and Liddy made technology the vehicle, not the driver. In other words, the focus wasn't how to use the latest technology to solve a problem. Instead, it was what is the most user-friendly solution and maybe technology can help. Here's Keeley again. Well, I think in, in many times the the um, creator, if you will, or the originator of a service is often coming from a technology mindset. So they start with the technology solution instead of what is the clinical problem. And that we've seen this um, in some cases with electronic medical records. We've seen it with other... Um, diabetes registries, other um, e, what I would call e-health solutions, well-intentioned, but often missing the mark on what is it that's needed in the moment to improve patient care. Third, Keeley and Liddy stayed flexible but focused. Liddy explains how staying focused on the problem can become difficult with success. As a project starts to uh, take off and when you develop something or an approach then you'll often get lots of requests and you'll think about things as well that, you know, well, maybe we could start doing this or you could use it in a different direction. Or we would have people who would ask us if we could adapt the platform or adapt the model in order to, you know, deal with an, another issue or something that might be quite similar. And again, we always tried to keep it um, simple and just remain focused on the um, um, the first 
our, our sort of first priority, which was to try to address the wait time uh, issue. Now, the flexibility piece um, and what you'll see from our service is that well, we have you know, a diabetes nurse educator on the service, and we also have within our HIV clinic not just the medical specialist, but we have um, a clinical uh, psychologist, we have a social worker, a pharmacist. So the flexibility piece came in when we would get and realize as we're going into new areas that will maybe a team-based approach or enabling access to somebody who's a specialist but not necessarily a medical specialist could also have high value. Finally, Keely and Liddy recommend taking risks. Liddy says they were realistic about the possibility of failure when applying for research grants, but that didn't stop them. There's no way you can implement a large program in a province like Ontario, it's very big, without trying things and probably having some things that are not going to work. So you can frame them as failure if you want, but um, you've got to take the risk and then basically tweak and improve um, and then keep building. And that, that's very much the approach that we have taken. Keely and Liddy remain disarmingly modest about how a simple conversation about wait times over coffee led to their healthcare innovation. They're convinced other healthcare practitioners may be having similar conversations, floating their own innovations, but maybe not acting on them. Keely says that's what they'd like to help change. So I think there's lots of conversations happening between providers about frustrations they're experiencing or good ideas that they have. And if we can get others to take that chance um, to find a little bit of funding and to move forward with an idea they have, I think, um, I hope that some of those ideas will flourish and, and too will make a difference. So if we can um, influence even a few physicians or clinicians, not necessarily physicians, to take those good ideas that they have from what they're living and to, and to make a difference, that would be, that would be awesome. For Evidence Network, I'm Nita Das McMurtry. You're listening to a podcast from evidencenetwork.ca, making evidence matter in Canadian health policy. Connect with the latest nonpartisan health research from experts across Canada and around the world, or sign up to receive our free monthly e-newsletter at www.evidencenetwork.ca. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Evidencenetwork.ca is funded by the Canadian Foundation for Healthcare Improvement, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, and the University of Winnipeg.